Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment. 32 teams, 32 days, and today we are talking about the Washington Redskins as we end my 2017-18 season previews. Man, some of y'all didn't think I was going to make it, but I always finish this series. Maybe not the others, but I always finish this series. We're going to talk about the Redskins today. Look at their strengths, their weaknesses. Look at their schedule. Give you some bold predictions for this football team. Give you a fantasy outlook for this football team. And end this video with a win-loss prediction for the Washington Redskins. We start by talking about the Redskins' strengths. And by the way, head over to sportsfanentertainment.com for the article previewing the Redskins. The link will be down in the description box uh, below for that. And we start with their offensive line, which to me is one of the better offensive lines in the league. And it is led by Trent Williams. He is the left tackle, and I think he's a top two left tackle in the NFL, maybe top three. It's he, Joe Thomas, and Tyron Smith. They battle for that positioning, but wherever you have him, it doesn't matter. We, we can all agree he's top three. We can all agree he is fantastic, a superb pass blocker. Man, this guy is absolutely ridiculous. The right tackle position, Morgan Moses, he's one of the better right tackles in the league, and there's decent depth there with Ty Nasheki as well. The interior of the offensive line is led by Brandon Scherf, the former five overall pick. I want to say out of the 20, what was it, 2014 or 2015 NFL draft? 2015, actually. And he's been a very good player for this football team. The other guys I don't currently love, Spencer Long. Uh, he's probably the better of the center and the, and the left guard right now. To me, he's okay. Um, and then Sean Laval. I mean, he's... He's a borderline starter in this league, but he's been decent in the past. We'll see what we can do this season. But overall, the offensive line, I think, is definitely a strength of this football team. And I definitely like the offensive line. How about the tight end position in Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis? This is one of the better, if not the best, tight end duo in the NFL. I mean, this is a great duo. Now, the problem is Jordan Reed just can't stay healthy. But you're still going to get at least nine games out of Jordan Reed. He's never played less than that. And he played nine games his rookie year. Okay, since they got about 11, 14, 12, so at least pretty much 11 games you can bank on him for. So that's most of the season. So despite him being injured, he's still definitely a strength. And then Vernon Davis as your backup tight end, that's a pretty good backup tight end. He's nowhere near the Vernon Davis that he used to be. But damn it, he's still actually pretty decent in this league as a backup. I like that. So the tight end's definitely a strength for this football team for the Washington Redskins. And we end by talking about their wide receivers which to me is a strength, but this is a bit of a leap to make because they just lost two wide receivers. They lost Pierre Garçon and Deshaun Jackson in free agency, but I really have faith in Jamison Crowder, who I think is really going to step up this year. The Redskins signed Terrell Pryor, formerly of the Cleveland Browns. He's going to come in and make an impact. And then also look out for Josh Doxson, whom the Redskins selected in last year's 2016 NFL Draft. They selected him in the first round. This guy's going to come in and make an impact. He's going to take the top off the defense at times and also catching a bunch of short to intermediate routes as well. Look out for this wide receiver core in Washington. We move on to the weaknesses for the Washington Redskins, and we have to start at the running back position. Um, it is bad right now, people, and you may disagree on this, but the preseason to me is confirming this. Rob Kelly, Fat Rob. First of all, I was never impressed with him last season. I know he had like three touchdowns against the Green Bay Packers. That's pretty much all he did. The rest of the season was so mediocre, so below average. And then look at what he's doing in the preseason. He had nine rushes for nine yards against the Packers. And then the first preseason game had three rushes for two yards. That's combined 12 rushes for 11 yards in two games for Fat Rob Kelly. This is not impressing me. This is not giving me hope and confidence for Fat at Rob's fantasy outlook this season and overall the running back position for this team. I like Chris Thompson as a receiving back, and they drafted Samaj P. Ryan out of this year's draft. I think he's going to end up doing well for this team, but right now, this is one of the weaker running back positions in the NFL. Fat Rob in the preseason can't get anything, and last year outside that Green Bay game really wasn't that impressive to me. So we'll see what happens this season, but I'm not in love with the running backs in Washington. 
Look at the defensive line. Now, they have a new guy coming, and actually they have two. They have Jonathan Allen, their first-round pick of this year's draft, 2017 NFL Draft at Alabama. And this guy's going to be great, okay? I have no problem with this guy. But they signed Stacey McGee, formerly of the Oakland Raiders, and they let Chris Baker go. Now, I would have kept Baker because you already know what Baker was doing in your defense. To me, he was one of the more important players from your defense. He was consistently a good player. And you let him go to get Stacey McGee from the Raiders, who last year played limited snaps, about 200 snaps. And he was actually decent, probably his best, you know, season yet. But again, only played about 200 something snaps. In the years before, he's really not been good. The Raiders won't miss him much. I'm telling you that right now, so I don't have much faith in this guy. Matt Ioannidis, this guy hasn't lived up to the billing ever since he was drafted, hasn't even gotten on the field for this football team, Ziggy Hood, uh, this guy's been around for a while now, but he's just not making an impact at this point, I'm just not in love with the defensive line currently in Washington, Terrell McClain, don't love him either, I think Jonathan Allen from day one may be their best defensive lineman, and outside of him, I just don't love anything here right now, maybe McGee has another good season with much more uh, snaps, but I, I, I doubt that. I think he really did well last year because he didn't play much at all. If he had a larger sample size, you would have seen more of the bad Stacey McGee. So I don't love the defensive line in Washington. And I also don't love the cornerbacks. Now, yes, they are headed by Josh Norman, whom I love. But who else do they have? Bashad Breland, last year he struggled with Josh Norman opposite of him. And I expect more of the same. I don't know what happened to this guy. Sometimes some of these cornerbacks, their confidence goes down, their technique goes out the window, and they struggle. And that appears to be the case for Bashad Breland. Perhaps he'll bounce back. But for right now, I don't love Bashad Breland and his career outlook right now. They also have Kendall Fuller, whom they drafted about a year or two ago, but he hasn't made much of an impact in this league. He's been struggling with injuries. His whole family seems to have this problem right now. Um, so I don't love this guy right now. They drafted Fabian Moreau out of UCLA. Um, maybe this guy's going to make an impact, but we'll see about that. We don't know about him yet. Um, Josh Norman I love, but I just don't love anyone else for this cornerback depth shot for the Western Redskins, so I just cannot say this is uh, anything more than a weakness for this football team. Look at the positions that are neither strengths nor weaknesses. Let's start with the quarterback position, where I actually wanted to say strength, because Kirk Cousins, although he's not great, I think he's an above-average quarterback in this league, okay? And I think he's one of the big reasons, if not the reason, Reason why the Redskins resurrected their franchise post RG3, right? I mean, with RG3, how not even post RG3, but like j just in general, right? Because with RG3, they had the one playoff season, then they stunk after that with RG3. Kirk Cousins, to me, helped them go back. It was Kirk Cousins and Jay Gruden. I think Cousins deserves a lot of credit. So I damn near said strength for Kirk Cousins. But my one problem with him last year was he had 4,900 passing yards, which is so great. But only 25 touchdowns. Okay, and also... For primetime games, he just doesn't show up. He struggles um, in big games. It may not even be primetime. It may just be afternoon game against the Giants. He'll struggle, won't put up points, won't score at the goal line in the red zone. He can move the football down the field, but when he gets to the red zone, when he gets to clutch time, when he gets to primetime, he freezes up. He needs to fix this problem before I can say he's a strength for the football team because too many times he's a detriment. Too many times he prevents them. Too many times he stops them in the fourth quarter in primetime games when there's when the moment is shining brightest, so I cannot quite say yet that Kirk Cousins is a strength, but I'll tell you this, they need to resign him, okay, they need to resign him and see where they can, where he can take them, because I'm telling you right now, I know we're looking at next year's draft, and we're thinking, oh yeah, there's going to be all these great quarterbacks, uh, half of them will be lucky to be as good as Kirk Cousins, so uh, to me, resign this guy, but right now, he is currently going to leave, I think, in 2018, we'll see what happens. We look at the linebackers, and I'm intrigued by the linebackers. Now, they just had a huge loss in Trent Murphy. He's going to be out for the season. But Ryan Kerrigan, he's the pass rusher for this unit. We expect him to have a nice season, as we should. Preston Smith. Last year, I was expecting more from Preston Smith. I thought he was going to break out, have 12 and a half sacks or something like that. Just didn't happen. But now with Trent Murphy out, he'll have more of an opportunity, and perhaps he'll do that. Inside linebackers. Okay, Mason Foster and Zach Brown. I love the Zach Brown signing. Um, I want to see if he can do it again because last year he had a good season, but I want to see if he can do it again. And Mason Foster, um, he's actually decent, right? So I, I like the linebackers here in Washington. Not good enough to say it's a strength for this unit, especially with Trent Murphy being out. But overall, it's a nice uh, backbone for the defense, I'd say. And then the safeties, DJ Schweringer. 
want to see what he does in this Redskin scheme first uh, before I can say that the safety is our strength and Sewer Cravens he's going to be now committed to the strong safety position we'll see how he can do there last season played a little linebacker played a little safety now he's going to play uh, be going to be playing safety so we'll see how he does before I can say this position is strength but overall the safeties are actually quite decent so look at my fantasy projections for the Washington Redskins Kirk Cousins 4,400 passing yards, 27 touchdowns, to so 13 interceptions. So this is about the Kirk Cousins year. I pretty much averaged uh, the past two years for Kirk Cousins and spat this out. Um, I can't I can't project much more or less than this right now. We'll see what happens. I love for him to get over 30 touchdowns, but I just I don't know. I don't see that happening. We'll see though. So my JP Ryan, I'm projecting this guy because I think he's gonna end up leading the pack for the Redskins again. Right now, I don't have any faith in Fat Rob, and I think I have a pretty good pulse on running backs in this league because I was talking about this in my Eagles video when I said I don't have any faith in LeGarrette Blunt, it now sounds like LeGarrette Blunt may be cut from the team. And Eagles fans couldn't believe what I was talking about when I said that, and now they're starting to learn. You're going to learn about Rob Kelly. And he, this guy's. I'm telling you, he's not going to be starting at the end of the year. P. Ryan's going to take over for this guy. So I P. Ryan leading the pack with 150 carries, 700 yards, and four touchdowns, which would not be great, okay? But I think you'd be encouraged because he's younger than Fat Rob because he's a rookie, and you'll like this. And then Jamison Crowder, I have him leading the way with 80 catches, 1,050 yards, and six touchdowns. Now, I can't project much more than this uh, because, again, they did lose to Sean Jackson and Perry Garçon, but they added Terrell Pryor. And, if Jer and if Jordan Reed played 16 games, and he's going to get more production. And now they essentially added Josh Doxson, right? I mean, he did play last year, but he's going to have much more of an impact this upcoming year. So I think this is about a good projection for him, a definite step up in production, but not a huge explosion for Jameson Crowder. Bold predictions for this football team. Kirk Cousins finally leaves after the season. Or maybe I should just say the Redskins let him go. Regardless, Kirk Cousins will not be a Washington Redskin in 2018. That is my prediction there. Um, I don't think that they want him. I don't think they're in love with him. I think it's going to be a huge mistake. I think it could set the Redskins back for another... I don't even know, uh, one to ten years it could be. Because I think, man, finding a guy like Kirk Cousins is tough. Hell, think about it. Honestly, Redskins fans, you do realize this is the best quarterback you've had since when? I, I, I think over ten years. A Donovan McNabb, RG3, and, and who was before that, you know? This might be the best quarterback you've had, and you're not going to keep this guy? Good luck with this conversation. Y'all are nuts. We look at... The fantasy projections, again, Samaj P. Ron and Jameson Crowder, they lead the way. That's bold prediction number two. I have both of these guys leading the way. This is bold because some people expect for Terrell Pryor to lead the wide receivers and for uh, Fat Rob to lead the way for the running backs, but I don't see it. I have P. Ryan and Crowder in bold prediction number three. I think the Redskins are going to compete for the NFC East. The Redskins are going really under the radar right now, and I don't think quite deservedly so. I think they're in the NFC East mix, and I, I would not be surprised at all if they end up winning it. So with that said, let's look at the schedule for this football team and begin to put together my win-loss prediction for the Washington Redskins this upcoming season. So once again, the Redskins are in the NFC East, and for every NFC East team, I'm saying they're going 3-3, three and three, and this will not happen. But all the teams are so close to me to where I don't want to say that any team is going to sweep another. I feel it's just ridiculous to say something like that right now. It's more likely that they split than not. And I can't tell you in which direction they would not. So I have each team splitting and we'll see what happens, right? Because I'm going to be wrong on that. We move on to the other divisions. You guys also go up against the NFC West. Okay, this is a good division to go up against, I think. Not the easiest, but one of the easier ones. You travel to LA to face the LA Rams in week two, okay? And this game is dangerous, actually, because the Rams are looking decent right now, and your defense is actually looking decent as well. So perhaps you can slow them down, but... I'm looking out for this game. This is not an easy W by any means. You host the 49ers. Now, this is a W to me. You're coming off of a bye week. This game is an easy W. Welcome back after the bye week. Okay, you travel to Seattle. I, I think this is an L. Uh, I think this is a big L, maybe the biggest L of the year. I think Kirk Cousins struggles, doesn't put up points against the Seattle defense. I still see you guys winning that. And then you host the Arizona Cardinals, which to me should be a win as well. So, I'm going to say... Two and two against this division, though, because although I do see wins against Arizona and San Francisco, 
and LA, I think you'll lose one. That you shouldn't. Uh, probably either one to Arizona or LA because although I do have faith in the Redskins, I don't have that much faith. Okay, so I'm gonna say two and two against the NFC West. You guys also go up against the AFC West. You travel to Kansas City, you host the Raiders. Okay, you go to the LA Chargers and you host the Denver Broncos. So hosting the Raiders is tough. The Raiders can go on the road and win. I have the Raiders winning this game in Washington to Kansas City. I don't think you're good enough to beat Kansas City. Kansas City. I think Kansas City is damn good. I think your special, uh, your special teams won't be able to contain Tyree Kill, and they get the W there. Traveling to LA. I think LA is tough. Now, this game is in December and LA could be injured at this point. The LA Chargers I'm talking about. They could be injured at this point. They always almost are. So look out for that. But I don't love this game either. Um, again, I do like the Redskins this year. I think they're going under the radar, but this is a tough schedule actually now that I think about it, now that I look at it. This is an L to me. Hosting the Broncos, not an easy W, but I think it's a W. But again, look out for this. So I'm saying one and three. I think this is a tough distribution. If you guys were hosting the Chargers, that'd be a W. If you guys were hosting the Chiefs, maybe you'd upset. But I can't go better than one and three or two and two in this division. I just don't see it. And you guys also go up against the teams that finish concurrently with you in the NFC. This means that you go up against the New Orleans Saints in week 11. You travel to New Orleans, which is not easy. Again, another tough distribution there. And you host the Vikings, which is also not easy. Um, but at least you get to host them. So I'll say W, but I'm not even that confident about that. Okay, so we look at my win-loss predictions for this football team. Now, this may shock you, okay? Despite me being kind of low on this football team, I see potential here. Okay, I really see this team falling under the radar. This is one of those rare teams where even though I'm not going to pick a great record, I can definitely see a path to success. I can see 12-4. and four. I can honestly see it. I can see the Redskins being the surprise of the season, going 12-4, and four, being a very good team because, look, the defense right now is actually decent. But it's going to require Brashad Brilliant to step up, Kendall Fuller to step up, Jonathan Allen to have a nice rookie season, Zach Brown and Mason Foster to mesh well, Schwanger and uh, Sue Kirby to mesh well, but there's talent. Like, all those names I just said are talented. A lot of them are high draft picks, picked in the first, second, or third rounds, so I can buy into them, ending up being very good. I can see that. Worst case scenario, the Kirk Cousins contract was a dark cloud over this franchise. They continue to lose these tough games. And look at this schedule. You know the problem with this schedule? You know, there's not enough easy win teams here. I mean, that we see right now. Perhaps some of these teams will end up stinking, right? But under no scenario do we think that the Eagles, Giants, Cowboys, uh, Seahawks, Raiders, Chiefs, Chargers are winning less than six games. Saints, less than six games? No. So you're facing a bunch of teams that will be 6-10 and 10 at worst outside of the 49ers. If I saw the 49ers here, and the Browns here, and the Jets here, and the Bills here, and the Dolphins here, then we'd be having a different conversation. But right now, we're looking at a conversation where we're facing a bunch of 8, 9, 10, 11, maybe even 12 win teams. That concerns me. Worst case scenario could be 6 and 10. This is the largest range I've given for any team, and I think it's legitimate. It just depends on how the Redskins can deal with this schedule. They could end up being really good. The offense meshes, I can really see it. But right now, my prediction for this football team is 8 and 8. I'm going to be safe because I think your roster is about on par with the rest of the league. It just depends on how you can deal with this schedule. If Jay Gruden can lead this team to success, but I think they're going under the radar. Um, I know this is ridiculous to say because I have them going 8 and 8, and I think they could even go 6 and 10. But I just see such a range of possibilities here for the Redskins. I think they could end up being really good. I think they could be disappointing. At the end of the day, we'll see. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Washington Redskins as I end my 32 teams in 32 days series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know that I did. Now, remember that none of these predictions were definite. I'm going to continue to fine-tune my predictions. And my final predictions video will be uploaded a week from this moment, next Thursday. Final predictions, Super Bowl, awards, all of that. Final win-loss predictions. That video will be up a week from now. So stick around and subscribe and wait for that. Until next time, I'm out. See you all later.